You're listening to Ask a Black Doctor, Friday Facts About COVID-19 featuring Dr. Bukasi Dubé. Join us every Friday at 8 a.m. and 2 p.m. for a half an hour as we discuss issues surrounding the current pandemic, vaccines and distribution, dispel myths, provide facts, and address concerns. We'll also be providing updates about COVID-19 vaccines and discuss how we can build a better culture around black health. Episodes will be available wherever you listen to podcasts, so head on over to the numbers.fm for the link to the show. Now let's jump into it. We want to thank you guys for tuning in to Ask a Black Doctor with Dr. Bakosi Dubé right here on the numbers, 96.7 FM, KNUM, and also available everywhere you listen to podcasts. So make sure you subscribe, like, leave a comment, and most importantly, leave a question. <laughs> In this particular episode, we're going to be delving into some more vaccination concerns. Um, we did talk about some of these things on some earlier episodes, but, uh, you know, as time progresses, that does carve out space for more conspiracy theories and, and more legitimate concerns to come forward. Uh, I don't always want to relegate it to conspiracy theories, but um, I will say this. When you don't take the time to address your concerns by doing a little bit of research, a little bit of reading, everything can start to sound like it's real. So with that having been said, uh, hey, Doc, how are you, man? <laughs> How's it been? Hey, I'm doing well, my man. I'm doing well. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. It, I, I'm laughing because I'm looking at some of the uh, discussion points we have today, and it does feel like Groundhog's Day in a way that we talk about this stuff in the beginning, um, but, you know, it's it's important that we remember that, you know, we live in bubbles. So while, while you and I have been having the same conversation for, you know, a couple of months now, there are people that have, you know, this information is brand new to them. And they've been living with uh, over a year's worth of misinformation, disinformation around vaccines and, and, you know, that causes fear. And uh, the direct result of that is people just not getting vaccinated. Um, so I did catch a special, it was, a, I think it was a Vice uh, story on YouTube over the weekend where they were highlighting people that were actually in the hospital having contracted COVID um, that were getting treatment, but still didn't believe they had COVID and had no intentions on getting vaccinated after they got out of the hospital. Um, have you been encountering anything like that where you're dealing with people who are, you know, receiving care that still in the process don't really believe that they're dealing with COVID? Unfortunately, that's, unfortunately, we're seeing a lot of that. Um, and it's quite sad. Um, you would think that after uh, let me use a different analogy. After getting run over by a car, you would believe that cars exist. Right. Yeah. Um, some people would say, you know, some people are choosing not to buy into that, not not to uh, believe that COVID is real, um, uh, even after getting infected, which is quite sad. Yeah. Um, I know we started off. We started off the conversation, as we always do, we started off the conversation, you know, exchanging pleasantries. Yeah. And I say that I'm well, but man, yes, personally, I am well, but I am very concerned about what's going on, um, what's going on in the community. Um, yeah. they, I mean, today's the worst day that we've ever experienced uh, during this pandemic when it comes to COVID-19 cases. Um the hospitalization uh, data is actually quite scary. We have about 850 people who are currently in the hospital uh, who were positive for COVID-19, mm. which is uh, 12 more than uh, yesterday. And yesterday was uh, another record setter. Yesterday was the worst day, but today is even worse than yesterday. Mm. We, have, we have about 200, 224 people who are in the ICU occupying ICU beds um, due to COVID-19. Um, and it's, it's really scary. Um, the numbers are not looking good. Um, we keep on heading in the wrong direction. Mm. So it's, yes, I am doing well personally. 
but I wish I had better news. I wish I could share better news about what's going on in in um, in the community. Well, just know that I'm grateful for the work that you're doing. I'm grateful for everyone in your profession and the healthcare profession that's out there doing what they can. Um, as tired as people may be from having to deal with the pandemic and whatever measures and whatever degree that we are dealing with it, whether it's having to wear a mask, whether it's having to be vaccinated, whether it's having to be quarantined uh, with healthcare providers on the front line of this, the fatigue that you're experiencing, that your community is experiencing has to be, I'm, I'm starting to see more conversations about that. You know, um, healthcare professionals, having to leave their positions, um, you know, having a hard time dealing with a population, a section of the population that is not doing their part in preventing infection and, and spread. Yeah, it, it's it's quite, um, uh, people in the healthcare community um, are fatigued. Uh, people are tired because they're having to work way more than they've, they've ever worked. And, um, but not only that, uh, they're being asked to do way more than uh, th their full-time jobs. And that's, that's quite, um, you know, you can do that for a little bit. You can do that for maybe three, four months. Mm -hmm. But, you know, going on almost 18 months now, and uh, there's no end in sight, things are actually getting worse. That is, um, that is scary. And the reason, the, reason, the reason it's not good for the people within healthcare um, is that when when we experience this fatigue, right, you may not get as good care as you would have mm -hmm. if, if you, uh, if people were not fatigued. So imagine having to, imagine having uh, to stay up, you know, 24 hours straight and then be asked to take an exam thereafter. You wouldn't do very well on the exam because you're tired, right? Um, the same thing, everybody in the healthcare community, from, from the you know, custodial service folks to, to, to the physicians, I mean, everybody, the respiratory therapists, the nurses, the medical assistants, um, uh, you know, the EKG technicians, everybody has been, um, has been working way more than they should. And it's 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 um, it's detrimental to to, mm -hmm. to those that are that are that are having to do this, and and also um, I heard of a story of uh, one patient who was uh, in Idaho who was transferred to a hospital to a local hospital in within the Portland metro because they didn't have they didn't have hospital beds anywhere wow. in Idaho and anywhere close to where this person lives. Um, in uh, close to the Oregon bo border. So you can imagine if you're being transferred all the way from Idaho to, to the Portland Metro, uh, because there are no beds anywhere else, that tells you how stretched and, um, the, the infrastructure is. Yeah. Um, that's not right. That's not fair to everybody, especially given that, you know, uh, we're now dealing with the, with the pandemic. For the most part, that is, that is, um, preventable yeah. by getting vaccinated yeah yeah oh, well, let's get into it let's address some of these uh reoccurring concerns um i did hear discussions um about the vaccine changing your dna and i'm not even sure what that could possibly have been founded in or what the concern would be you know what I'm saying? Like for someone to be like, I don't want to take the vaccine because it's going to change my DNA and do what with your DNA, like change it and affect you. How, what are the list of concerns that you have for your DNA changes? Like, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, um, you know, I think we, we, we have to meet people where they are and explain yes. and, and try to, you know, engage them as much as possible. Um, Yes, for you and I, some of these things seem basic, and some of these mm -hmm. things uh, mm -hmm. may not make sense. But uh, for some, for some people, it's 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 a legitimate concern, yeah. and we just have to reassure them that no, you know, these vaccines cannot change your DNA. They they do not have the technology to do that, um, and all all they do is uh, all the vaccines do is teach your immune system to 
to make the necessary antibodies to, to recognize and fight the, the virus if you were to get infected. So it's, um, uh, there's a lot of misinformation out there. Dr. Google has a lot of stuff and there's no vetting going on to see what, you know, what's, what's on Dr. Google. So um, uh, that's why we're here, right? That's why we're having these conversations. Yeah. 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 Um, When you say that they don't have the technology, the um, vaccine don't have the technology. Could you speak a little bit towards that um, explaining that? Because I think even in that explanation, some people may find it confusing because when they think technology, they're not thinking, you know, b- biological technology of any sort. Yeah, yeah. So, so uh, the only way your DNA can be changed right now, there are several. Well, th- the only way it can be changed right now is probably what most people have heard about, which is the CRISPR technology, right? Um, and uh, th- that is not what is going on with the vaccines. Mm-hmm. Uh, the vaccines only contain. Uh, genetic material, in this case, messenger RNA, if they're the RNA vaccine, uh, mRNA uh, vaccines, and RNA stands for ribonucleic acid, by the way. So they contain this material that teaches your body, which th- that that tells your body to make proteins that look like the ones on the on the virus. So mm-hmm. you're not getting the virus, and the material, the genetic material that you're getting, um, has no way of uh, changing your um, has no way of changing your DNA. Cannot change your DNA in any way. Um, there it is. There it is. It cannot happen, listeners. There's no way for the vaccine to change your DNA. If you need to be more informed when you're having these conversations with people, share this episode with them. <laughs> okay. Um, it cannot. The vaccine cannot change your DNA. However, Doc. I hear what you're saying, but there is still this concern about a microchip in the vaccine and that you'll be tracked by the government. Now, what I try to tell people is if you're concerned about being tracked by the government, one, what is it that you're doing that the government needs to be tracking you? (laughs) Like... (laughs) <laughs> I, used to, I used to teach a class, introductory computers class, and we talked about, you know, um, internet usage and people, you know, having their emails hacked and things of that nature. Yeah. And uh, a gentleman was like, yeah, you know, you got to watch it because then they'll get access to your bank account. And while all of that is true, I had to explain to them, these are federal crimes. These are very, very heavy penalties for these crimes. And unless someone in this room is a millionaire, there's really no reason for anyone to hack into your bank account. Also, when we're talking about being tracked by the government through a chip, I feel like the majority of our listeners are listening to this podcast and listening to a podcast on their cell phone. And if they're not listening on their cell phone, the majority of our listeners have cell phones. I don't go anywhere without it. It's in the booth with me right now. That's all the chips. There's so many different chips <laughs> in your cell phone. All of the tracking technology is right there. It is. It is right. It's uh, you think about uh, uh, the apps that would download on our phones, right? Mm-hmm. What are those apps doing? Sending back information to the creators of the apps who right. are essentially tracking us. I mean, they can tell us to the T, you know, to the to the very second what we've been doing. Yeah. Uh, based on uh, based on the information we freely give them um, yeah. through the the apps that we have on our phones and through our phones as well, right? Um, so uh, these vaccines do not contain microchips, uh, and the government will not track you in any way using these vaccines. They don't have that technology, right? These vaccines. So yeah. uh, uh, you know, be rest assured. You, you are not going to be tracked in any way using these vaccines. Right. And, you know, speaking of which, another concern that keeps on coming up is uh, um, uh, along the lines of uh, being tracked and um, microchips um, and, and the like, um, is uh, is this a mark of the beast? You know, the, the, right. the the thing that uh, uh, some some uh, Christians refer to uh, when they're talking about um, um, uh, the the number six 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 and right. uh, 
that being the mark of the beast. And, you know, the honest truth is, we can't, we're not here to, to, we're not here to give religious advice, right? We're not here to talk about what faith you belong to and how your faith interacts with all of this. But what we can say is that, hey, all the major uh, Christian denominations, the, the leaders have come out in favor of these vaccines. Right. Uh, from Pope Francis to, you know, the Anglican, um, uh, the, the head of the Anglican Church, you know, the head of the Methodist, the head of the Baptist churches, they've all come out, all, all denominations, they've all come out in, in support of these vaccines. Right. And, uh, um, so I would say, hey, I'm not giving you any religious advice. All I can tell you is that the religious leaders are saying these vaccines are safe and the religious leaders have taken these vaccines. Right. So, um, if you're not going to trust me, at least trust your religious leaders who are saying <laughs> vaccines. And, and even, you know, for those of us that are uh, heavily religious and, and um, are familiar with the word, no matter what uh, version of the word you're reading, when, when talking about the mark of the beast and, and the impending doom that that's supposed to, you know, that time period is supposed to mark in the, in the Bible and revelations, uh, understand that even in that explanation is the way it's detailed in revelations. This is not anything close to that. This is not anything similar <laughs> yeah. to that in any shape yeah, yeah, or fashion. Yeah. It really isn't. Uh, that, that, the whole idea of, you know, you being marked and the government being able to track your transactions and, and monitor you and follow you around. That's literally your cell phone. So if you, <laughs> I can't remember the last time I've used cash, to pay for anything. I either use the chip in my card or I use my cell phone, cell phone yeah, and, and just pay through the phone. So, exactly. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I, there, there's, there's no, there, there shouldn't be any uh, religious concerns tied to being vaccinated. Um, you're not being tracked. Um, this is no, this is no plot to control you. It's just us trying to get, this pandemic under, you know, manageable. This is, this is preventable. Um, there was a conversation between a father and son. I saw this meme. It was a, it was a tweet, actually. And um, it was around vaccines. And the father was explaining all these previous viruses and diseases and just, just naming them. And the child was like, I've never heard of any of these. And you're like, exactly. <laughs> Ex precisely, right? Precisely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's it. <laughs> so you we, mentioned, go ahead. No, I was just about to say that, you know, the older generation, you know, they, they grew up with, uh, you know, our grandfathers grew up with, with polio. Right. right. We even had a president who had polio, who suffered from polio, FDR. Right. And that's all gone now. It's gone right. because of va vaccines. I honestly think that, you know, five, ten years from now, we'll look back and say, "Man, what was that? What was all what that fuss thing, about?" Yeah, what was that thing called again? Uh, <laughs> COVID. What was that? Yeah, yeah. So, can you explain how the vaccinations eliminated polio? Because it was running rampant. Was it just a matter of everyone being vaccinated? And the, the virus had nowhere to go? Like, how does that work exactly? Precisely. I like the way you put it, right? The, the lower the disease burden in the community, the lower the number of people with, with a virus, the, the lower the chances that the virus will spread to other people, um, the lower the chances that there will be new mutations. And so you vaccinate a whole bunch of people, you vaccinate uh, enough people, um, uh, you, you you essentially prevent uh, the, the spread of of the virus, and that's what we're trying to do with COVID nineteen, right? Mm. We're trying to get uh, th this term herd immunity that um, that that we're trying to reach uh, right now. The state uh, is it about if you're looking at about if you're looking at uh, the eighteen and older population, the state is at about uh, I think about 75 percent. Okay, um, um, which we. So that that that's that's where we are as a state right now, uh, and unfortunately, 
there is still a significant portion, 25% of people who are not vaccinated. And that's where we're seeing all these new cases come up. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Oh, man. Okay. Next question. Can you get COVID-19 from the vaccines? So uh, we we have addressed this quite a few times. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's put it to rest right away. You cannot get COVID-19, which is the disease that's caused by SARS-CoV-2, the coronavirus. You cannot get it from the vaccines because the vaccines do not contain the virus itself. Mm -hmm. So there's absolutely no way you can get COVID-19 from the vi from the vaccine. I'm so curious uh, to see where some of these, you know, where these come from, whether this misinformation comes from. Who benefits from our population not being safe? You know, who benefits from this misinformation? It's just, oh, it's devastating. Uh, I, I was, I, I totally agree with you. It's devastating. It's, and man, the numbers that we started off with, that we talked about at the very beginning, at the top of the, the show was, you know, the, the highest number of cases we've ever seen in the state of Oregon, in the hospital and in the ICU. Um, that is devastating. It's unbelievable. Uh, another question, do vaccines have long-term effects like prevent people from having children in the future? So we're talking about infertility and, and, and pregnancy issues. I remember um, this being a huge concern initially, and I yeah. have a, a couple friends in my um, in my in my community where this was a concern for them, even as 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 recent as two three weeks ago, and I had to rely on some of the information that you gave me in in previous episodes to convey that to them and and kind of ease their concerns. Yeah, so so it, that's a very interesting question in that the FDA, uh, the CDC, uh, HHS, they've all come out just recently saying that, you know, we are 100, we can def now definitively say that these vaccines should be given in pregnant women and that they are mm. safe in pregnant women. Um, and as we all, uh, as, as some of you may know that um, uh, in the first six six months of life, babies get their, um, most of their immunity from the antibodies that they get from, from, uh, from their mothers. Uh, the, the breastfeeding that occurs, the mothers transferring antibodies to, to them. So that's, that's an effective way of uh, preventing illness and protecting the child. So, so there are people who, are, uh, who have been pregnant who have gotten these vaccines and done well. There are people who have gotten the vaccines and gotten pregnant mm -hmm. and have done really, really well. What we know is that if you were to get sick from COVID-19 and you're not vaccinated while you're, uh, if, so if you're pregnant and you were to get sick from COVID-19, mm -hmm. your outcome and your baby's outcome is actually way worse than someone who, who has been vaccinated. Yeah. So. Uh, that's that they if 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 uh, that they should convince people to get uh, vaccinated even if they're pregnant even if they're planning to get pregnant because yeah. it does it has absolutely no way of interacting with your fertility organs it has absolutely no way of interacting with uh, your ability to have to have kids. I did see a story also in that vice special where the parents were not vaccinated and um, the mother went into delivery. And the child was born healthy without COVID, but the mother had COVID. And the, those crucial times, those crucial uh, moments right there after pregnancy, when it's important for the mother and child to be together, she couldn't because she yeah. had COVID. She had COVID, yeah. So the, she, she misses out and the baby misses out on mm -hmm. the bonding that's supposed to happen. Right. Um, early on and that, that's very, very important, right? It's very important for the psychological well-being, psychiatric well-being for, for, for the mother for, and for the baby. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, is it better to get COVID-19 
because your body creates a natural immunity as opposed to getting the vaccine? Oh, absolutely not. <laughs> so absolutely not. Do not take your chances, right? Because if you were to get COVID-19, let's talk about the things that could potentially happen, right? There we go. You could end up really, really sick in the hospital with, you know, severe pneumonia. You could end up with uh, injury to your lungs from potential blood clots that you could get from that. Um, uh, we call that pulmonary embolisms. Or you could end up, you know, with 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 uh, strokes or, or 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 dementia because of blood clots in the brain. Uh, some people experience heart failure um, due to heart attacks and um, uh, going back to talking about um, uh, the brain, you know, you could experience significant psychological uh, issues and uh, memory loss issues that occur from, from um, the effects of uh, COVID-19. Yeah. Um, and then that the one thing that we're not, that a lot of people are, are not focusing in, in on is, hey, kids are going back to school, right? And if they're not vaccinated, kids have, Previously, kids were not getting as sick as as um, adults were, and actually, to be to be fair, they're still even now they're still not getting as sick as adults mm. uh, get when they get COVID nineteen. However, we're seeing a whole lot more kids getting sick and ending up in the hospital, and we're seeing the long the, the long COVID um, that that um, some of you may have heard of, which is the, um, which is what happens after you've been infected with COVID-19 and you, you develop um, the chronic fatigue, the, the, the headaches, the, the body aches that, um, mm -hmm. that may continue for a long period of time after you get sick. So to avoid all of that, get vaccinated so that even if you were to, even if you were to be one of the rare breakthrough cases, you will not get the long COVID. You will be spared from all of that. Yeah, it's it's it, again. It boils down to: Do you want to gamble like that? Do you want to take the chance of contracting COVID and having to deal with these long term effects just because you don't want to, you don't want to uh, get the vaccine? It's it's not worth it, people. Uh, and then I encourage more people to have conversations um, about what it feels like to live with COVID long-term. Um, just, you know, the psychological and memory issues, these are life-changing situations here, and it doesn't have to happen. It no longer has to happen. We have the technology, we have the science, we have the protocols. If we follow them, we can avoid a lot of harm. You really, really can yeah, yeah. So protect yourselves, protect your your loved ones. I sound like a broken record now, but uh, <laughs> say that all the time. <laughs> We're gonna keep saying it. We're gonna keep saying it. Are there stories of people getting really sick after getting the vaccine? So um, that's incredibly rare, right? Um, we saw that uh, earlier with the Johnson and Johnson, where people yeah. were getting blood clots, but those were so rare. It was two in a million people that mm. got this rare side effects where they got blood clots um, and ended up needing uh, hospitalization. But uh, so of note, this was after administering about 8 million doses mm -hmm. and only 15 people came down with this. So 8 million doses and only 15 people came down with this. Yeah. Um, and seven of them required hospitalization. So incredibly rare you have a higher chance of being struck by lightning than that happening you have a higher chance of winning the lottery than that happening <laughs> so you know i'd say you're better off um you're better off getting vaccinated and we also have the the, the we also have the mechanisms right to monitor all these side effects yes um, and so so when when this uh, this incredibly rare side effect occurred um there was a pause. Remember, they yeah. paused. They stopped for about yep. two weeks. Stopped giving the the Johnson That's and Johnson, Johnson. and yep. um, and evaluated this because it was mostly women, right? Women between eighteen and, and fifty. Evaluated these women. I evaluated the reports and found that you know you were better off getting vaccinated than not getting vaccinated. 
that these side effects, these blood clots are actually much higher if you get COVID than if you get vaccinated. So much, much, much higher. So you're better off getting vaccinated than not. There's always a higher risk. A yeah. friend of mine said, I wonder why people are less fearful of getting sick than they are of getting vaccinated. <laughs> it's it's true though, right? It's yeah. <laughs> I think part of it is part of it is uh, the stories that we've told each other about these these vaccines. Um, unfortunately, that's that's what we have to deal with, and uh, mm-hmm. those are the, the, the that's the misinformation that we have to go up against um, and try to educate people, try to try to engage people and, and, and inform them as much as possible. Yeah. Yeah. Final question. Why do I need the vaccine if I've already had COVID-19? Uh, that's a very good question, right? Because we're seeing that some people are saying, hey, I've, I've, I've had COVID-19, I, therefore I don't need the vaccine. Yeah. So what happens is um, if you were to get COVID-19, uh, you build up antibodies that um, protect you from getting COVID-19 again. The unfortunate thing is those antibodies uh, start to wane significantly after about three months, 90 days. These vaccines have been studied. Mm-hmm. These vaccines have been studied to show that you get a, you get a, a more robust response from um, when you get the vaccine and you, uh, your, your antibodies, you get more uh, robust response and antibody buildup. Um, and it lasts much, much longer than the 90 days that you would get from um, the, the infection. So, and of course, you don't get the problems that come with the infection right. from getting vaccinated. So you're better off again, sounded like a broken record, you're better <laughs> off again getting, uh, getting the vaccine. There it is, folks. There it is. Uh, thank you again, Doc. Um, I, I Again, uh, I am sure many of our listeners are extremely grateful for the work that uh, the medical community is doing right now. Uh, variant after variant keeps popping up, and the work's not getting any easier. And it's, No, it's not. Yeah. No, it's not. It's, I just have to, I have to say one last thing, right? Mm-hmm. In the Black community, we're still experiencing low vaccination rates. Uh, we're at about, what about 50%, a little over 50% right now in the black community, in, uh, specifically in the Portland Metro. We need to do that. We need to change this black folks. We need to change this because um, uh, it's, we're the ones that are suffering from this. We're the ones that are experiencing the highest you know, hospitalization rates uh, per capita. Uh, so we need to we need to do something to protect ourselves, right? Um, and that is get vaccinated. Yeah. Yep. <sighs> All right. Well, thank you so much, Doc. I will catch you next week. Everyone, please check out the information in the description. We have dates for the pop up clinics right here at the uh, Portland Art Museum. We will be extending and um, developing a l- much longer schedule. We'll be doing pop-up clinics in North Portland and Northeast Portland. So please make sure you're following us on social media and subscribing to the podcast to get the information about that. Dr. Dubay's contact information is also is also in the description. So if you need any assistance, uh, if you're holding uh, events or um, gatherings, maybe some civic community, civic organizations or um religious organizations and you want to have a pop-up clinic there too, be sure to reach out to us. Thank you so much. Thank you, good people. Thank you for listening to the podcast and the radio show. Um, Catch you next week. All right now. Thanks for tuning in to Ask a Black Doctor, airing every Friday at 8 a.m. and 2 p.m. right here on The Numbers. If you missed it, you can find the link to the full episodes on our website at thenumbers.fm. You can also subscribe to the podcast on all streaming platforms. Be sure to rate and leave a comment. If you have questions you'd like answered on future episodes, you can submit them through our website or the link in our bio on Instagram and Twitter.